Hi everybody, what's going on? My name is Akash and this is MedGeeks. So in the last few weeks, we talked about ankle joint a lot. So, you know, we've talked about the distal fibula fracture and with the Weber classification, and we've talked about Ottawa ankle rolls. So let's continue this trend and discuss um, medial mal and posterior mal fractures today. So as we know, ankle injuries um, are a result from bending forces, right? They're commonly described as inversion or eversion injuries. And typically, inversion and eversion are motions of the subtalar joint. And so when you combine this with the um, ankle and the midfoot uh, motion, they become supination and pronation. And then internal rotation and external rotation um, of the angle refers to the motion of uh, the talus within the joint. So inversion injuries are technically supination and eversion injuries are technically pronation. And why do I bring this up? Uh, this is because there's a classification called log Hansen classification. And if you remember with the distal fibula fracture, we talked about the Weber classification. Uh, log Hansen is definitely more complex and I'm not going to delve into it too much because I don't think it's going to um, uh, benefit most of the, 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 P, the general PA audience. Um, but I'll put it up. So here it is. And from here, just know that the supination and external rotation, the SER, um, is the most common and will comprise of 70% of all ankle injuries. So let's start with the isolated medial malfractures, right? These are unusual, but they're not gonna be rare. Um, generally, medial malfractures indicate a loss of stability of the ankle. So remember, we already talked about this in the previous video. Uh, we mentioned that if there's a deltoid ligament tear, um, which is a, it's gonna be equivalent to a medial malfracture. And we also discussed that you you should get the mortise view or the ankle stress view. And if that's over four millimeters um, wide, it can be assumed that the deltoid ligament is torn and thus um, can be considered as an isolated medial malfracture. While we're at uh, isolated fractures, let's also talk about isolated posterior malfractures. So the posterior malleolus is going to be the posterior aspect of the distal tibia. Um, and posterior malfractures occur either from an impact off the talus on the posterior aspect of the tibia or from an external rotation or pronation eversion force. So again, this is going back to the log Hansen classification. Uh, posterior malfractures are gonna be extremely rare to be isolated alone. Um, they do occur with bimal, and, uh, I mean trimal fractures but it's very unlikely that the posterior mouth um, fracture will be isolated by itself. And this is because it shares the same ligaments with the lateral malleolus. So whenever you have a posterior mouth fracture, also look for a lateral malleolus fracture. And now we can move on to more complex fractures. So those were isolated medial and posterior mouth fractures. Again, they're gonna be rare because they do not occur alone. Um, this is where these fractures come in. So bimalleolar fractures or bimal fractures or trimal fractures, trimalleolar fractures. Um, when you have a medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus fracture, they're considered as bimal fractures. When the posterior malleolus is also fractured with the bimal, it's considered to be a trimal fracture. These are very complicated fractures um, and there is absolutely no doubt that these fractures are unstable and they need um, operative correction. Um, and so speaking of treatment, you know, before determining any treatment for any fractures, you must get a ne good neurovascular physical exam to rule out any orthopedic emergency. Um, given that the neurovascular exam is normal, you can proceed with the treatment process. So with an isolated um, medial malfracture or an isolated posterior malfracture, 
if these are non-displaced, um, you know, they will require a posterior splint or an AO splint or a short leg cast, depending on your preference and the patient. Um, and they'll require close follow-up in one week. Remember that with a medial mal fracture and a posterior mal fracture, um, they make the ankle very unstable. Um, so if there's even a little displacement, um, it's automatically considered unstable. So if it's displaced over two millimeters, um, they will require operative treatment. But you know you still need to immobilize them initially to prevent any further displacement. So let me repeat that. If isolated posterior mal or medial mal fractures are non-displaced, they'll require some kind of immobilization and then a close follow-up with orthopedics. If they're displaced of more than two millimeters, they will require operative treatment. And then we already talked about the bimal and the trimal fractures. Um, these will require immobilization and operative treatment, um, no matter what the severity is, just because of um, its baseline ankle instability. And that is posterior medial mal fractures and bimalleolar and trimalleolar fractures. Um, if you guys have any, if you guys have any questions, um, hit me in the comment section below, like the video, and make sure you guys subscribe so you can follow us along every week. That's it. We'll see you next week, guys. Bye.